Hi everybody, uh, Ray Barone here, and this is on double angles and half angle identities for pre-calculus. Let's begin. Okay, double angle identities. Uh, these are more you're going to need to memorize, you guys. you got a lot to go. Uh, so welcome to pre-calculus, you guys. Uh, no offense, that's what I tell my students. Uh, lots of things you got to memorize in this class. You can do it. you just you just got to do it. Okay, the sine of uh, 2 times theta is equal to 2 sine theta cosine theta. That one's the easiest one to remember, you guys, and you use that a lot. Okay, cosine of 2 theta, there's three formulas. One of them is cosine squared minus sine squared. The other one is 2 cosine squared minus 1, or 1 minus 2 sine squared of theta. Okay, um, uh, let's see, I don't have a gimmick on those. Those all come, from, these come from um, uh, sine squared plus cosine squared by just manipulating that equals 1. So anyways, uh, there's three formulas right there. Um, I know that cosine squared is always starting at the, um, if you have the one with sine squared, it doesn't start, it has the one minus that, so, uh, so anyways, um, um, and then you have some tangent ones, so tangent of 2 theta is 2 tan of theta over 1 minus tangent squared of theta, for me, that's the hardest one to remember, but, you know, if I wrote it down a couple of times, um, uh, I'd get, if I spent, you know, five minutes writing these formulas down as many times as I could, I'd have them down, and you would too, you guys, trust me, I've done it. Okay, so here's an example. If the sine of theta equals 3 fourths and theta is terminal size in the first quadrant, that's just, just code word, everything is positive, find the exact value of each function. Okay, the sine of 2 theta. Okay, remember, there's the formula. The sine of 2 theta is 2 sine of theta cosine of theta. Well, I already know the sine of theta is 3 fourths. I need to find the cosine of theta. So let's go ahead and set up a right triangle. There's theta right there, and sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so there's my 3 fourths right there. Be careful, this is not a 3, 4, 5 right triangle. The 5 would have to be right there where the 4 is. So I have to use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out this side. So this is going to be 4 squared minus 3 squared, which is uh, 7. So that uh, leftover side is square root of 7. Okay, now the cosine is root 7 adjacent over hypotenuse, root 7 over 4. Okay, now I have everything to plug it in. All right, so there's my formula. So just plug it all in, and you get 3 root 7 over 8. Okay. Use that same information. Let's find the cosine of 2 theta. Okay, remember there's three formulas right here. Uh, I th it, and you can choose either one you want. And to me, I think this one's the easiest one right here, this bottom one, because the sine of theta is 3 fourths. I don't have to deal with this radical in here. So the cosine of theta is the root 7 over 4. So I'm going to just stay with the sine of theta right there and use this bottom formula. So it's going to be 1 minus 2 times 3 fourths squared. 3, 4 squared, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, and then um, uh, 2 goes into 16 8 times, so I have 1 minus 9 8, and this is 8 8 minus 9 8 is negative 1 8. Okay? Uh, tangent of 2 theta, okay? There's my formula right there. So now I have to get the tangent of theta. So the tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent, so 3 over root 7, which is 3 root 7 over 7, so I'm going to plug that right there and right there. Here we go. So uh, there it is right there, and then, uh, uh, let's see, so I get uh, 6 root 7, because 2 times 3 is 6, uh, root 7 over 7 still, and then I just squared this, square the 3 is 9, square the root 7 is 7, and square the 7 is 49, so I get 9 times 7 over 49. Alrighty, so uh, let's see. So um, uh, you can go ahead and multiply 9 times 7, but I went ahead and canceled. 7 goes into 49 7 times, so this becomes uh, 9 7 and this is 7 7 so 7 7 minus 9 7 is a negative 2 7 So I have a fraction on top, fraction on the bottom, so I divide those fractions, so I'm going to invert and multiply the bottom fraction, okay, and then go ahead and cancel things appropriately. Uh, so you should get a, a negative 3 root 7 is the final answer on that. Okay, uh, okay. so the sine of 4 theta, you need to recognize, and this one, every pre-calculus book I've taught out of, uh, this, this example comes up. So the sine of 4 theta, can you recognize that uh, uh, 4 theta is the same as 2 times 2 theta? So the sine of 4 theta is the same as the sine of 2 times 2 theta. And then I'm going to use this formula right here, except my theta this time is 2 theta. So that's why it's going to be 2 sine 2 theta cosine of 2 theta. And I know what the sine of 2 theta is. It's, uh, it's this guy right here, 3 root 7 over 8. And the cosine of 2 theta is negative 1 8. So I'm just going to plug all that in. Okay, so here we go. Uh, cancel out. And there's the final answer right there, 3 root 7 over, over 32. If um, if you saw a cosine of 4 theta, I would have done the same thing, and I would have, I would have used, um, it, it doesn't matter, I would have used, since I have the cosine of theta right, 2 theta right there, and the sine of 2 theta right there, I would have used cosine squared minus sine squared, but any one of those three formulas would have worked. In any, in any case, you would have got negative 31 over 32.
Okay. Uh, okay. Half angle identities. Now I tell my students, you guys. I don't know what your pre-calculus teacher will say, but I tell my students this. This will be the only time you'll use these guys. So I, I don't tell my kids you have to memorize these. You just have to learn how to use them. Uh, I would give these on my test. Uh, again, I don't know what your pre-calculus teacher would do. Uh, so I, I might be you know, overstepping my boundaries right there. But I don't know. I, I just don't see these in calculus hardly at all. And, and they give these formulas to you guys. So half angle identities, uh, uh, we use these ones. And there's one for tangent also right there. So for example, you guys, you just got to know how to use them. So use the half angle identity to find each right here. First of all, this pi over 8 is, is 1 half of pi over 4. 15 degrees is 1 half of 30. Okay, so my, it would be, my angle would be 30. I would be plugging in for this guy right here. Okay, for this guy on my cosine, I'd be plugging in pi over 4 right there. Okay, this is uh, 1 half of uh, 135. So 135, <coughs> since it's cosine, uh, let's see, 3, 2. So that would be a negative root 2 over 2 on that one. Okay, so here we go. Uh, so um, here's the, the first one here. So I'm going to plug in the cosine of pi over 4. So I'm using uh, my cosine formula, which is right up here. Okay, so plus or minus, and uh, cosine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. Okay, this is 2 over 2, so I just uh, simplified that right there. And when you have a denominator and a numerator, it slides down and gets multiplied. So that's where the 4 came right there. And the square root of 4 is 2. So plus or minus uh, 2 root 2 uh, all over plain old 2. The radicals only goes for the numerator on that. All right, okay, uh, tangent of 15. Remember, it's, tan uh, it's uh, tangent of 15 is the same as the tangent of 30 divided by 2. So I'm going to plug in 30 right there for my cosine. So the cosine of 30 is root uh, 3 over 2. So three, 3 over 2 goes right there. Again, that's 2 over 2. So I get 2 minus root 3 over 2. On the bottom is 2 plus root 3 over 2. And then these denominators cancel each other out. Okay, we don't like having radicals in the denominator, so I multiplied by the conjugate of the denominator. This is 2 plus root 3, so this will be 2 minus root 3. Foil out the top times the top, I get this. And then when you foil out conjugates, you just square the first one and square the second one. So 2 squared is 4, root 3 squared is 3, and you subtract them. 4 minus 3 is 1, so there's the final answer on that. Plus or minus square root of 7, minus 4 root 3. Okay, all of that. So... All right, uh, let's see. So this one right here, okay, 135, the cosine of 135 is negative root 2 over 2. Okay, so uh, that's what I put in right there. It's plus that, but it's since it's negative, it goes in right there. And this one simplifies to uh, plus or minus the square root of 2 minus root 2 all over 2. All righty? All right, so one more piece. Verify that um, uh, one side equals the other side. Again, I like to go from the more complicated side, which to me definitely this side is it right here. So I'm going to use a little cosine identity here. Um, uh, and since um, I'm trying to get tangent in there, so I want to get sine over cosine somehow. Tangent squared, I want to get sine squared over cosine. So what I did for this cosine of 2x right here is, uh, is I used the 1 minus 2 sine squared of x. Okay, so here's the cosine of 2x. It's one of those three, so this is 1 minus 2 sine squared of x. Secant squared of x just means it goes cosine squared of x on the bottom. Remember, secant and cosine are reciprocals right there, so I just put cosine on the bottom. There's that 1 right there. Okay, now I made common denominators. I multiply this by cosine squared over cosine squared. That's going to get me to that right there. Okay, there's that 1 right there. Okay, I'm going to distribute this negative through the parentheses right here, and I get this. Okay, and then uh, remember this from uh, way back when we started doing this, cosine squared plus sine squared equals uh, 1. And then if I subtract off cosine squared, I get sine squared equals 1 minus cosine squared. Well, this is cosine squared minus 1, which is actually negative sine squared if I multiply both sides right there. So I, this is negative sine squared right there. So I put in a negative sine squared right there. So just think of these like a negative x plus 2x would be a positive x. So negative sine squared plus 2 sine squared would be a positive sine squared. And sine squared over cosine squared equals tangent squared. Wasn't that fun?